Hey there, and welcome to this short lesson on common tone diminished seventh chords. Short lesson, very long title. And to start off today, we're listening to a tune called Common Tones in Simple Time by John Adams. It's a piece that takes place over a very long period of time, which we don't have today. So let's get started. So what is this common tone diminished seventh chord? Well, first of all, it is a diminished seventh chord. And it is a diminished seventh chord that has a common tone with a chord that it embellishes. Now, normally, diminished seventh chords do not have any common tones with the chords that they embellish. So here's a regular diminished seventh chord. Turn that up a little bit. Notice everything's moving away from the one chord and then back to it by step. That's nor what normally happens. Um, some other things about the common tone diminished seventh chord. Um, it's an embellishing chord. It has a weak kind of decorative function. It doesn't have a strong function of its own, an embellishing function. And we label it as a CTO7, and, to, and we put it in parentheses to show its sort of weak decorative function. It doesn't have a really strong uh, root or anything. It's just embellishing something else. So now let's look and see how this chord works. All right, now we've seen how a regular diminished seventh chord works. Let's look more specifically at how the common tone diminished seventh chord works, or a CTO7. These usually are used to embellish either a one chord or a 5-7 chord. And the common tone in the common tone diminished seventh is the root of the embellished chord. Okay, so let's look at this example down here. But first, um, notice that when we're embellishing the one chord, the root of the chord we're embellishing is Do. So the thing I've bracketed here in the example shows that that's kept as a common tone in the diminished seventh chord. So no matter how this chord is spelled, it's got to have that C in it. And then here when I've got a 1-6, that root again, the C, is used as one of the notes of the diminished seventh. And this is how it sounds. So hear that do, do, do. And here's the inversion. OK. And uh, similarly, when we do the 5-7 chord, embellish the 5-7 chord, we'll use sol as one of the notes of the diminished seventh chord. So here's my 5-7. Keep the sol and pretty much all the other notes just move down by half steps. <laughs> and back up. You can hear the embellishing function that it has. It's just kind of a bunch of neighbor tones, chromatic neighbor tones to the notes of the 5-7 chord. Okay. How do we spell this thing then? Um, you can spell it in various ways, but usually it's written such that its root, follow me here, its root resolves up to the third of the chord that it's decorating. And that doesn't make much sense, but if you look at the examples we have, um, when you're embellishing the one chord, it's spelled as a sharp two diminished seven, meaning D sharp, F sharp, A, C. And so it's spelled with the root moving up to the third of the one chord. And that allows the C to stay the same. When we're embellishing the 5-7, it can be it's generally spelled as a sharp 6 diminished 7. So we have A sharp, C sharp, E, G. The A sharp is again moving up to the third of the uh, G chord here. Right? So, but even though that's usually how it's spelled, we don't care much about the inversion symbols for the chord, and it could be spelled in other ways as well. Um, another way of thinking of it is that um, if you can spell it as a lower neighbor, chromatic neighbor, then do it. Spell it as a chromatic neighbor. But you'll see that the resolution is always very smooth. It's by often by half step or by whole step in one case or by the common tone, of course. So listen to that again and listen to all of those very small steps. And here's the five, six, five. Right? Okay, that's how those things work. And um, there may be a quiz, there may not be. 
Have a good day.